hello there and um you are welcome one more time to this physics uh, this physics tutorial class sorry presented to you by o3 schools jam app um your o3 schools jam app an application which can be installed on both your android phones and your windows laptops and what this app does for you quite simply is that with it you're able to assess a wide and far reaching range of features which help you as prepare to take your utme um your jump app has so many features um it gives you information about different schools the courses they offer the subject combination required to offer the subjects then there's of course the mock exam feature you can just you can only peruse the questions without the time constraint if you decide to do so which is a study mode then you can also search for questions by topic such that after reading a particular topic, you are able to actually go through the Jam app and answer the questions Jam has brought out as regards that topic to ensure that you are fully ready when that day comes and you see any question at all in that topic. So your O3 Schools Jam app has a lot for you. Now, however, what do you require to use this app? Simply download it, install it, and then activate it. Activation costs 2,500 Naira only. Very, very cheap. If you are buying your individual past questions, you will definitely spend more than that amount. So all you require is 2,500 Naira to activate the app. And there are different ways to activate. So you choose the mode of payment that works best for you. Pay for your app and it shall get activated. Now, I know some of you will have complaints that you're falling victims to a scam or order. They told you to pay your app did not work. I can assure you, O3 schools is not like those apps. If you've experienced that, once you pay for your O3 schools um, app, it shall be activated and you'll be free to enjoy all the goodies that come with it. And um, with that, let's take a look at today's class. This will be very, very simple actually. We are looking at pressure. Now, if you watched our video on gas cells, we did mention pressure there, but we did not discuss it to its full extent. What is pressure? Pressure is simply the perpendicular force per unit area on a surface. Basically, the, all the forces acting on that surface at you know 90 degrees that are perpendicular to it. The forces per unit area gives you pressure, which implies that pressure P equals to force F over E. Now, this has several implications, one of which is that the smaller the area, the bigger the pressure can be. That means if you are landing, a man who jumps, for example, and lands on just his toes, experiences more pressure in those toes than he would have if he landed flat on his feet. In that case, the pressure that will be spread around the feet, which is a bigger surface area. When landing on just your toes, the full force is just on those toes. And that, and that consequence you can imagine is cutting your bread with your knife, for example. Why does your knife work so well and, I don't know, a piece of ruler or wood doesn't work? It's because your knife is sharpened at the edges. The edge of the knife is sharpened. And the sharpening simply means... They are making that surface area as small as possible. If they make that surface area sufficiently small, then the pressure this knife is at on that bread is way more than the pressure which is flat surface or a round surface with exact on it because this area is smaller. So force per unit area gives you a higher pressure. So that's the basic idea of pressure. However, um, you should know that the unit of pressure assigned it is newton per squared meter, which is also referred to as Pascal. But there's another unit which is known as bars, and one bar equals to well, in approximate form, it is series power five Pascal. But in full form, it is 101325 1, Pascal. But in most exam cases, it is sufficient to approximate to 10 to the power 5. 
so this is pressure in solids now what if we want to look at pressure in liquids now pressure in liquids is a bit different from pressure in solids um first off on that pressure in solids where it's simply acting downwards pressure in liquids acts in all directions at the same time acts in all directions at the same time but there are some special properties of this pressure in liquids one of which is the pressure at the same depth of two dissimilar materials is exactly the same if i have two similar liquids and i'm at the same depth in those liquids then the pressures are equal however pressure also inside a particular liquid increases with depth the farther down you are in that liquid the higher the pressure the higher you are the lower the pressure so pressure increases with depth then last but not least if you are at the same depth in two different liquids then the liquid with a higher density automatically has a higher pressure so remember the pressure depends on the depth the deeper you are the higher the pressure then it also depends on the density the higher the density the higher the pressure now quite simply pressure is equals to the density of the liquid times depth in that liquid times g now this can be summarized sorry this did not look right this is a liquid this can be summarized by saying density times h times g now please remember we are measuring this in terms of depth so that this was a surface we are looking at depth in this direction okay so now looking within this liquid the next thing we have to know is pascal's law pascal's law and um pascal's law simply states that when pressure is being transmitted during a liquid it is transmitted undiminished to every part of that liquid that implies that um quite simply if you generate pressure in a particular liquid then that pressure goes to all directions in that liquid with the same intensity that means that pressure one must equal pressure two as this pressure is force over area then f1 over a1 equals f2 over a2 what this means quite simply is if there is a t or a tick tube like this and this tick tube is transferring its liquid into a thinner surface from pascal's principle the pressure here should equal the pressure here but because the area here is much smaller then therefore the force in this section if i put that f2 becomes greater than f1 because a2 is less than a1 the force in this section is greater than the force here because the area here is smaller than the area here while the pressures in both are equal then the last thing we have to look at in pressure is atmospheric pressure now the atmosphere surrounds it and this atmosphere is made up of water vapor air and well as we are aware air is a mixture of several other gases well all these gases cumulatively create pressure which is exacted on every object which exists on this planet the pressure reduces the higher you go so as you climb to the top of a mountain you experience less pressure than you do on the surface of the earth now however that pressure is not truly felt by humans because our bodies have evolved and adapted so that we have been balanced perfectly to that amount of pressure that's why astronauts going to space have to wear their spacesuits and other things because the pressure at that situation is no longer equal to the normal pressure to which a human is susceptible therefore 
The atmospheric pressure at the standard value of usually 760 millimeters mercury at the Earth's surface, or 10 raised power 5 newton per squared meters. So, for these and a bit of other solvents, let us dive right in to our O3 schools jam app, find questions, and tackle them. So, let's see. Opening our three screws jam app. Our very first question comes to us from the year 2001, question number four. And this one says, the height at which the atmosphere ceases to exist is about 80 kilometers. If the atmospheric pressure on the ground is 760 millimeters mercury, the pressure at a height of 20 above the ground is what? So one more time. The Let's just picture it. So um, this is it. We are seeing this is the atmosphere around it. And the atmosphere ceases to exist at this height of 80 kilometers. And that if the pressure down here is 760. And we know pressure increases with depth. Which means the pressure at the top here must be zero. Then they're asking, what is the pressure at a certain height, which is 20 kilometers above the Earth's surface? If this distance, if this depth from here to here is 80, if I'm going 20 above, then that my new depth, let me call H1, that new depth must be 60 kilometers. I do hope this diagram is clear. If it isn't, let me just um, redraw it as big as necessary. Say this is Earth, and um, this is the atmosphere surrounding Earth. What they're telling us is that the pressure on the Earth's surface, which is a distance of 80 kilometers, is 760 millimeters mercury. Now, as we know, this is not stated in the question, but as we know, Pressure increases with depth. That means as it's coming down, pressure is increasing. So if you have 760, it must mean that at the top, pressure was zero. Then the question says, we have to find the pressure at the height of 20 kilometers above the ground level. In this 80, I'm to go up a height of 20. But pressure wants depth going downwards not height going up. Therefore, if I call this first depth my H1, then this second depth, H2, must be, if here is 20 and everything is 80, the air must be 60 kilometers. Now, there are more than one way to solve this question. Let's see. First of all, we know that pressure also density times height times G. So dealing with the first one, Pressure 760 equals to, um, before you even do this actually, it will be way easier if you decide to remove what is varying. That means our G is not changing and our density is not changing. So the only two factors that are changing is going to be pressure is constant, then H. So constant must be P over H. So you notice We've done this a lot in physics. It's a simple way to solve when you know one thing is varying depending on something else. That means that P1 over H1 goes to P2 over H2. And as a result, I know that my initial pressure was 760 when the height was 80 kilometers. And to find the pressure P2 when the height is 60 kilometers. So what can happen here? Uh, let's say zero cancels zero. I'm left with P2 equals to 76 times 60 over 8. So let's see. 76 times 60 over 8 equals 570 millimeters mercury. And when I go back to my jump app, I can see that that is option C. So I do hope we get the idea.
This is very, very simple. You could solve it this way. If you like, you could even interpolate the method we use when converting temperature. I know that if it is zero year, 760 year, what should it be at this height? Any method you use, you always are guaranteed, as long as you are mathematically correct, to arrive at the correct answer. Okay? That leads us to our next question. This one being from the year 1998, question number 14. It says, the atmospheric pressure due to water, let me call this P0, is 1.3 times 10 raised power 6 Newton per square meters. What is the total pressure at the bottom of an ocean 10 meters deep? Now, the bottom of the ocean means the height, the depth rather, we're using H, is 10 meters. Um, the density of water is 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. And G, as usual, is 10 meters per squared seconds. Now, please note, that's not to find the total pressure at this height. Now, there's already atmospheric pressure acting on the surface of the water plus the water pressure. That means P0 is going to be acting on the surface of the water. And then, this is the water, we're going to this height. The water pressure is also going to be acting here. So the total pressure acting on this surface will be atmospheric pressure plus the pressure due to the water. Let's find the pressure due to water. Pressure will be density times height times G. Density is 1000. Height is 10 and G is 10. That is simply going to be 1000 zero, 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 and two more zeros. But based on the fact that my options are all in standard form, and put this down from as well. So this is 10 raised power 5 newton per squared meters. Now we have to say total pressure, let's call that PT, becomes water pressure plus atmospheric pressure. Um, my water pressure is 10 raised power 5, atmospheric pressure is 1.3 times 10 to the power 6. Now this addition looks a little bit tricky, right? So what can I do to add? Before you add, please note, these two must have the same times 10 to power, which means I want to make this, and this is basically the same thing as 1 times 10 to power 5. I want to make them have the same power. How can I do that? Let us make this have power 6. If I want to add 1 to this, I must move my point backwards once, giving me 0 0.1 times 10 to power 6 plus 1.3 times 10 to power 6. Mathematics is very important. So 1.3 plus 0 0.1 gives you 1.4 times 10 to power 6 newton per squared meters. And that is option B. See, so the solving itself is very, very easy. The only trick is knowing your addition. You have to be careful when you are doing that. Because you do not have a scientific calculator. Okay. Now as number two. We move on to question three. And question three this time is from the year 1997. Question 14. The year is 97. The question number is 14. Okay. A liquid of mass. 1 times 3 is power 3 kg. I don't have to use the one time, so just write that. Fills a rectangular tank of length 2.5 meters and width 2 meters. If the tank is 4 meters high, height of the tank is 4 meters, what is the pressure at the middle of the tank? What is the pressure at the middle of the tank? Now, if you remember, in pressure, you must use density to solve. Now, the first thing I must do is solve for the density of this liquid. And we know that density is mass over volume. So I have to get my volume. Volume must be, this is a cuboid. The tank is a cuboid. So what's more for a cuboid? Length times breadth times height. 2.5 times 2 times 4. 
and that should give you about 20 centimeters cube therefore the density must be the mass times power 3 divided by 20. 10 to the power 3 is the same thing as 1000 over 20. so 0 cancel 0 100 over 2 is 50 kilogram per meters cube now i believe i can solve for my density or that for my pressure pressure is density times height times g density is 50. now this height in this case rather please note we're told to find the pressure at the middle of the tank so if the tank is four meters the middle must be half of that which is simply going to be two meters so this is two and g is 10. 50 times 2 is 100. 100 times 10 is 1000. 1000 newton per square meters. They have all my symbols in standard form. And therefore, I have to express this in standard form, which means I'll move my point from here. 1, 2, 3 times, giving me 1 times 10 to the power 3 newton per square meters. And that is obviously option D. You see, the steps are very, very easy. Next up, um, we have question number 10 from the year 1995. The year is 1995. And we are looking at question 10 from that year. In this one, we are told a hydraulic press has a large circular piston of radius 0 0.8 meters and a circular plunger of radius 0 0.2 meters now once i know i'm doing the hydraulic press and there's a large circle and a small circle i know there's a comparison here to r1 and r2 now a force of 500 newton is exerted by the plunger so the plunger is the 0 0.2 so f2 is 500 newton find the force exerted on the piston the piston is 0 0.8 meters which is f1 and once i see i'm comparing two things like this my mind should go to pascal's law which tells me that the pressure at all points is equal therefore i can say that F1 over A1 equals to F2 over A2. And as you are aware, these are both circles. And for the area of a circle is pi r squared. But in this situation, my pi can be equal in both of them. So I should be having F1 over R1 squared equals to F2 over R2 squared. Therefore, F1 over R1 is 0 0.8 squared, plus the F2, 500, over R2, which is 0 0.2 squared. Okay. So, um, this will be F1 over 0 0.8 squared is simply 0 0.64. Then 500 over 0 0.2 squared should be 0 0.04. So cross multiply f1 equals 0 0.64 times 500 over 0 0.04 so all i simply have to do is open my calculator and punch in my values that is 0 0.64 times 500 divided by 0 0.04 and that gives me a value of 8000 newton which now put my O3 schools jump up is my option A. Okay, and so this will lead us to our next question. For our next question, we are going to the year 2002 and looking at question number five. 2002, question five. And here we are told. The hydrostatic blood pressure difference 
between the head and feet of a boy standing straight is pressure difference is 1.65 times 10 to the power 4 newton per square meters okay we have to find the height of the boy given that the density of his blood is 1.1 times 10 to the power 3 um, kilogram per meter cube and g is 10 and to find his height this is actually very very simple the pressure difference must be because of his height difference and as such pressure equals to density times h times g so that is 1.65 times 10 to the power 4 1.1 times 10 to the power 3 times h times 10. if i multiply these together this 10 here simply increases this number by 1, giving me 1.65 times 10 to the power 4 equals to 1.1 times 10 to the power 4 as well, h. So to get h, I can divide both sides by 1.1 times 10 to the power 4. This cancels this, and h will be equal to 10 to the power 4 gets rid of 10 to the power 4. I'm left with 1.65 over 1.1. And when I press that in my calculator, I get 1.5 meters. So you see, very, very simple. And now we shall take one last question before calling it quits with this topic. Now for this one, it's a little bit special. We have a diagram. In the diagram, we are told, if the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters mercury, mmhg what is the pressure of the chamber g now there's a certain pressure based on the gas within that chamber g which is what is keeping that liquid on that arm at three centimeters and on the other side of the arm there is liquid at a height of 10 centimeters so the difference between those two has to do with the pressure of the gas so that means that quite simply, if atmospheric pressure was acting on its own, then both gases or both liquids would be at equal heights. But in this case, we have this gas, this is a rough diagram by the way, we have this gas creating pressure here. As so this gas was able to push the liquid down such that here, this height here became just 3 meters, while this height here became just 10 meters so the pressure of the gas is going to be the pressure it's used to do this difference in movement so the difference between these two is the pressure being generated by that gas so this height is 10 centimeters squared h minus h1 so this height is 10 cm why this is 3 cm therefore the height total height must be seven centimeters and therefore if you had the seven centimeters means the pressure of the gas in actually initially seven centimeters of mercury however this is centimeters and we know the atmosphere is working in millimeters therefore convert centimeters to millimeters to multiply by 10 that is just 70 millimeters of mercury so to get my final answer all i have to do is add this pressure generated from the difference between the length of mercury trails in both arms to the atmospheric pressure po plus p so 760 plus 70 which gives 830 millimeters of mercury and that is option c you see these are the steps one by the way this question is from the year 1994 question 42. so these are the steps we need to take when solving pressure questions so just keep in mind the formulas are not many just have to keep your eye, your eye out for um variation in terminology or system of solving once you know what you're doing with your formulas and you understand your principles all questions in this topic are actually quite easy. 
And with that, I'd like to thank you very, very much for taking the time to watch this class on pressure presented to you by O3 Schools Jam app. Um, you are free to like, comment, and please subscribe to this channel so that you can actually see more videos with tutorials on different subjects and, of course, different topics in those subjects. Remember, get your three schools jam app and activate it. My name is Kadari Kanye Thank you very much for watching.